Uh, we're now uh, on the banks of the Nile River uh, in a town uh, not far from Adet. And we came here because the community have wanted a bridge across this river for as far back as people can remember. This bridge was, they haven't had any crossing for so many years, you know. This request were, was there uh, during the time of the emperor. This community has been without a bridge forever. It has never had the ability to join two communities except by forging the river. This has never been re responded. So we were the charity that uh, were willing to consider and work with them and uh, get their dreams, uh, dream a reality. Uh, this project uh, it was financed in large part by funds from partners in the Horn of Africa, but the design, the work, the supervision, the vision to see it, all that was the Ethiopian community. And this is a chance for them to get together and see what they can do uh, they raised among themselves $30,000 by getting approximately $1 from each household. And two years ago, uh, using the design of Ethiopian engineers and an average of 200 people a day for six months, they built the bridge. They call it the Little Nile because this is the part of the Nile before it hits Lake Tana, but it's the Nile and it's a big river. Um, and what's the point of the bridge here? What's it, to, what's it do? Well, over there, on the other side, there's about 250,000 people that cannot come to market on this side. And there's about 300,000 people on this side that can't go to markets over there or schools or anything. So it's kind of a neat project that brought together partners in the Horn of Africa, the community and the local government together. At this spot right here last year, uh, the villagers recorded 38 drownings and others whose peop the names of the people they didn't know, but they, there was 38 people that they could identify, almost all mothers and children trying to cross. Like right there in that swift spot there, it's about seven feet deep right now, right where the, the current is. When you see people coming across, they swim across that current. This is at the lowest point of the year. The water uh, in another three months will come right up to the cut bank here. So it'll come up about another nine feet. And what we want to do is put a span across here to the island, and then another span from the island to the other side. Uh, families and friends live on both sides of the river. And so for five, six months, uh, there would be no contact between, uh, between them. So th that would make a, a huge difference. And what they're telling us now, that if somebody dies on the other side, the people can't even go to the funeral or the mourning service. So we asked an Ethiopian engineer to do the design. We also wanted to get a second opinion from Canada, EBA Engineering. Uh, we're happy that uh, the first uh, design by the Ethiopian engineer was accepted by our Canadian counterparts. And then we, uh, in order to reduce the cost of the bridge, we use our own construction consultant. We'll be going and doing this and that would be a wonderful thing, you know. People could go to the market, to clinic, to uh, visit their families and friends. A uh, huge uh, difference this would make. This is the staging area for the Abai River Bridge project. The rocks you see have been transported here uh, manually. You can see the, the little boxes they use to carry the rocks, including the crest rock, uh, a great distance. They're working on, first of all, this section here, which is 55 meters, joining uh, this bank uh, to the island and down another 55 meter section on the far side. And the community was highly motivated at the beginning when we were diverting the water to do the pillars. Well, as many as 2,000 people, uh, villagers, were working, working there. You can see that we built a uh, retaining wall to keep the water back in order to facilitate construction. Construction of this river would be impossible during the rainy season in June and July and August. Uh, so the crews are working diligently today. It's a very labor-intensive project. I'm quite impressed by it. We only used um, Times to dewater, you know, remove the water, and a welding machine. Other than that, it was all done by human beings. 
and it's not an easy thing to estimate the value of uh, the community's labor. Okay, so we have just arrived at a bridge opening. It's a two-part bridge that we built across the Little Nile River. So they're celebrating that they now have a bridge that joins these two communities. It is a really big party and everybody is excited. You can hear the noise, see all the people, you can hear the horns blowing, and uh, we're excited to, uh, to be part of this. I couldn't count the number of people. People were kept coming and coming, and nearly everybody carrying food and drinks. <laughs> If you look at the bridge there, there's people who have been coming for half an hour non-stop. Um, Ten passing a point at any given uh, minute. And what this really tells you is that the community is totally engaged in this project. Not only do they take the benefit from it, but they're coming to celebrate the work they've done for the last year on it. Uh, they've waited for this bridge all their lives. You can tell how poor people are. Uh, everywhere you go, you see people bare feet. But despite all the poverty, mm, they know how to thank people. You saw whatever they have, they brought and fed us, and they gave us the gavi, and uh, you saw the dancing, etc. That's uh, for pe people who are really poor. Uh, it's unless they believe in something, you know, it's very hard to kind of thank the way they thanked us. If you were doing the kind of the, the, the projects that people really, really need, that's the kind of reaction you see at the end of the day. People come out. You can't force people to come. You can't force people to uh, contribute for a celebration unless they really believe in it. That's a, a good testimony of the work we do. And usually the communities come up with the next project and uh, with their contribution. That's the most interesting part of the work we do. Already in the last week, they've approached us to have a reforestation project on the island uh, and on the banks, just to make sure that in the future erosion never threatens this. So uh, you can see the process, the initial vision, doing things together, realizing what they can do as a community, and then moving forward. That's empowerment, and that's what we like to think our charity's about.